Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music. And the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all. We're a nation of immigrants, a country with roots in other soils. Nowhere is that more true than in the country of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, inviting you to tune in to A Taste of Louisiana and a new series dedicated to our food heritage. Louisianians are descendants of seven primary nations that have influenced every dish we cook today. Welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. <laughs> hello, hello, how y'all doing? Hello, hello, how you doing, baby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, how you doing? <laughs> hey, good. How y'all doing? <laughs> oh, y'all, thank you so much for being here. Wow, what a good looking group. Thank you so very much as we continue to search out the unique food cultures that make this state great. The Creoles of Cane River. Do you know how beautiful you are? Just say, huh? huh? My, you're, you're absolutely great. Look, uh, if you sit down, relax, you know, smile a little bit and cut up. I'm gonna feed you dirty rice. I might, I might even put, a, <laughs> I might even put a pork roast on top of it. <laughs> Y'all in the heart of Louisiana, just outside Natchitoches, are the Creoles of Cane River. For centuries, these people have preserved their culture through faith, tradition, and an incredible family unit. Once a forgotten people, the Creoles of Cane River are alive and well. Terrell Delphin and his daughter Daphne tell us a little bit about their unique heritage at Melrose Plantation. The story of the Creoles of Cane River begins with Marie Therese Coincoin, an African born in 1742, a slave of Louis Juchereau de Saint Denis, the first commandant of the Natchitoches Post. Marie Therese became the matriarch of a family of 14 children, four black children and 10 of Franco-African heritage. Coin Coin and several of her children were sold to French merchant Thomas Pierre Matoye, with whom she lived publicly for approximately 20 years. Matoye gave all 10 of his children his name, even though she was still a slave at that particular time. Though they obviously loved each other, they never married. Why? At the time, the French Code Noir regulated conduct between Europeans and Africans, which did not allow such marriages. In 1786, Matoye and Coin Coin's relationship ended. Thomas Pierre gave Marie Therese the land he had bequeathed to their children and paid her a lifetime stipend of approximately $120 annually. Eventually, Matoye freed Marie Therese and all of their children. Claude Thomas gave Marie to raise a parcel of land, parcel of land within his plantation, which was about uh, uh, 46 acres of land. And uh, it was illegal according to French law for slaves to own property at that time. But uh, slavery during that particular time was what I would classify as a mild form of slavery, where the people who enforced the law, even though the laws were on the books, they were off somewhere in Europe, in uh, Louisiana at that time, was just being developed. Between 1794 and 1803, Marie Therese and her sons received many land grants, thereby establishing Melrose Plantation. Her second son, Louis, was known as the builder in the family. We have even seen documents where uh, Louis had been sent to Paris to learn architectural uh, designs and what have you. The first house that was built at Melrose was the Yucca House, and then eventually Louis, the son, built uh, 
uh, the, pl the big plantation house here that's known as Melrose today. She and her children ended up owning 18,000 acres of land south of Natchitoches along the banks of Cane River. And uh, at one time prior to her death, they owned more slaves than any uh, family of color in America. Marie Therese and her Matwaye children were part of colonial aristocracy. Documents suggest that many of the slaves they purchased were cousins. And Marie Therese charged her children with the responsibility of acquiring as much property and land as they possibly could. Despite Thomas Pair Matwaye's marriage in 1788 to a woman of his background and race, he and Coin Coin had founded a unique colony of people. Proud descendants of the Creoles of Cane River still live in the area today. And to be a Creole myself, to be the living product of all of these beautiful cultures to come together. And I think it's something that the world needs to be made aware of. Um, we need to educate people more about who we are and let them know, yes, we do exist. So we are the products of French, Spanish, African, and Native, Native American. And uh, we identify our culture as that of Creole. It has nothing to do with race, it's culture. And we take pride in being part of the Creole culture of Cane River. Louisiana is a beautiful blend of people, cultures, and cuisine, and I feel blessed to call it home. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think every one of, our, of us should feel very blessed to call Louisiana home because the uniqueness that this state has is hard to find, not only in this country, but around the globe. And you're a great example of it right here. And sitting at the front table is Betty Matwaye, and she's dressed as Marie Therese Coin Coin because uh, she does, in, in, I guess, interpretation of, uh, of the lifestyle at Melrose Plantation. It's nice to have you in, uh, in that wonderful outfit today. Thank you so much for uh, being here. And what a unique story uh, uh, Marie Therese had, because in those days, to be a slave, to eventually own land, at the same time to grow an empire, and then to buy as many of her own family members out of slavery, basically into it, to eventually give them their freedom is just an incredible story. The story of the Cane River Creoles. And y'all, a couple of great, yeah, we ought to give her a hand, thanks. <laughs> Y'all, a couple of great guests in the kitchen. You open the screen door of a Cajun cabin or Creole house, you're in trouble. No, you're in trouble, they'll walk in. Our great Lieutenant Governor from the state of Louisiana, Lieutenant Governor Mitch Landrieu. Uh, not, not only do we love him, but he loves the culture of Louisiana. We thank him uh, so much for being here. Terrell Delphin, I wish I loved you quite as much as I loved the Lieutenant Governor. You can have me you're always, you do. You're always <laughs> stealing my thunder, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Terrell Delphin, y'all, yeah, you talk about love, a great guy from Cane River. You have done so much to preserve the culture, and I'm going to applaud you myself. Huh? Thank you very much. <laughs> these, these are the people that's responsible. <laughs> well, he, but believe, believe me, I know who and what and who's involved, and y'all all sitting right here. Thank you. Let's give them a yeah, round. Absolutely. Uh, sitting right next to Terrell is the person responsible for it all, his wife Lily. Lily Delphin, what a great cook. I've never been to Cane River where you hadn't fed me something better than I can cook. Hey. Uh, and that's the truth, huh? <laughs> And I guess it took the two of them to come together to, uh, um, to create Daphne sitting on the end. Look at that gorgeous girl, huh? My God, are you beautiful, huh? Uh, uh, are you married? No. You're not married? Look, I want to talk to you after this. <laughs> <Huh? laughs> and, uh, and Virgie Banks, when we talk about Creole art, I just love, I was stunned when I first saw Virgie's artwork and she's sitting on the counter here in the kitchen with us today. Virgie, thanks Thank for you. being here with us, okay? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then over there on that squeeze box, uh, Willis Prudhomme from uh, uh, Kent, uh, Kent, did you say Kinder? Kent? 
He's from Canada. I, I, you know, I thought he was from Elton, but he said, no, he's from Canada. That's two miles away, huh? <laughs> I want to I talk about your last name in a little while, that Prudhomme name. We got to talk about that. Anyway, y'all, it's excitement in the kitchen today, and I thank y'all all so much for being here because I just love where you're from, and every opportunity I go to cook and eat your food, I will. What am I cooking? Oh. The toughest job a man has when he starts talking about Cane River Creole. You know what I decided to do? Two dishes that went together. A beautiful dirty rice and then a pork roast to put on top of it later. So y'all ready for me to do that? Let me show you, let me show you what I have uh, uh, in my little bowl here. First of all, chicken livers. You know how many people back away when you say chicken livers? Shame on them. Huh? Good chicken livers, I love them any kind of way. The chicken livers, the chicken gizzards, which by the way, I have actually poached already because it takes a long time to poach them. A lot of, a lot of people will take the, the gizzards and just grind them raw. And that's okay, you can cook them long and slow, they'll tenderize, but I find that to boil them first and tenderize them, then chop them and save that stock makes, I think, the best dirty rice. And then of course, a combination of different rice and seasoning. Now, Keith, uh, uh, take a look in my pot here. Uh, this thing's so hot, this cast iron just pops away. But look how the chicken livers and uh, have just started to cook away. I've been cooking them for about, I don't know, maybe an hour already, just slowly cooking them on a the low fire. And uh, now they're starting to color the bottom of the pot. The flavor is wonderful. Into that, I'm going to put the gizzards that I've already uh, cooked and chopped up right here. I'm going to throw that in there and just kind of saute that around because they were already cooked. And then, of course, I'm going to put in onions. Y'all use a lot of onions in Cane River? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, now, now I, I was when I was talking to Lily a while back. She said, "Well, we don't use too many of those herbs, like thyme and all of that." But she says onions, green onion, and then she even specified green onion tops. That, that's a good cook when they say green onion tops. Uh, garlic, y'all like garlic? No? Come on, y'all like garlic better than that. Huh? <laughs> I know it, huh? <laughs> now I'm gonna saute this around. And, uh, uh, and uh, Tara, while this is cooking here, explain to, to us how did the Creoles of Cane River work to keep that family unit together? Because everybody in Cane River is related in some way or other. Yep. Either by heart or by blood, one or the other. Right. How did that happen over well, the Well, I would imagine, uh, John, that uh, it happened primarily by blood. And uh, as the population expanded, the first generation married their first cousins, and then they went down the Red River into the Mississippi, the New Orleans, and they recruited people and brought them back to marry into the Matoire family of right. Cane River. But uh, it's the unit of, that's why I believe, uh, John, that culture is so important to humankind, uh, simply because there are certain aspects in the in the culture like uh, uh, faith, work ethic, right. principles, and the unit of the family well, responsibility. Well, y'all well, have surely done it. And, and, and Governor, when you look at places like Cane River and the uniqueness of that culture, I mean, what a great entree for tourism into our state as well when people search out these unique cultures and cuisines. Well, many years ago, you know, when tourism kind of turned into what it, what it is modern, people were looking for something new and flashy like Disney World. Right. But what's happening now, especially after September 11, people are looking for something authentic. Right. They've gone back to the really deep, rich things that they can't find anywhere else. And I think that if you look at the Creoles and Cane River, you can't find that anywhere else. That's not something that Maine or Kansas exactly. or Paris can replicate. We only have it in Louisiana, and we no, do it better that, what, than anybody what, else. What a fabulous point. That's exactly right, the uniqueness of our state. So, y'all, have, I have my onions, my celery, I have my bell peppers, I have my green onions. I can put a little bit of the stock in. I would cook this, of course, for about another 45 minutes to really flavor this nicely. Salt, pepper, how much pepper? as much as the family will allow me to do, not necessarily more than I can stand. And look what it looks like. I would mix this with equal parts of rice, one to one. One spoon of meat, one spoon of rice. And this is what it looks like when it's done. You can put a roasted chicken on top of that. You can put a good pork roast on top of that. Anything you put on top of that, call me for dinner. That's all I can say. <laughs> Y'all, Lily Delphin is one of the greatest Creole cooks I know. I asked her to teach me to make one of her specialties of Cane River. She brought out a cachon. This striped crookneck pumpkin can be found along Louisiana's highways. And though it's a great dish for the holidays, especially Christmas, 
It's fabulous all year long, especially the way she makes it. Let's watch. We're standing here in the beautiful dining room of Melrose Plantation, and I have with me today one of my greatest friends and also a fabulous Creole cook, Lily Delphin. And uh, Lily, uh, um, this is Creole country. Uh, Natchitoches is one of the oldest settlements in the United States. It's certainly older than New Orleans in the state of Louisiana. But when people think of Creole, they immediately think of New Orleans. Uh, what's the difference between the Creoles of Natchitoches and the Creoles of New Orleans, especially the food? Well, we have a different style of cooking. Uh, New Orleans, I think, has an uptown style of cooking, whereas we use only basic ingredients. Uh, you won't find the herbs such as rosemary and thyme in our foods. We just use parsley, onion tops, right. and such as that. Now, you're going to cook a great dish for me. You've been telling me about this wonderful kashaw and uh, and a, a, a coconut. It's, it, this is kind of a casserole, isn't it? Now, is this normally served, uh, uh, what, for holidays? or? Uh, it can be for holidays or special occasions. Now, I'm gonna, now you're going to mix and I'm going to yes. pour. You, uh, okay. I've had my lesson. So this All is right. the cashaw. Uh, now, exactly right. what is cashaw? It's just a, a winter type squash that's grown in the area locally with a crooked neck. Uh, that mm -hmm. green and white striped pumpkin. Green and uh, white pumpkin, stripe, right? yes. Now this is a cracker, cracker, cracker crumb. meal, a cracker crumb, just regular right. saltine type crackers? Um, I use a buttery type cracker for flavor, but any type cracker right. could be used. It's just to give it a little body. It's a little body. Yes. And then we have sugar, sugar. going mm -hmm. into it. Now, so this is a sweet dish. It could also um, be used mm -hmm. for dessert probably, uh, well, right? Well, yes, like yes. Like a pie filling, Right, guess, it huh? could be. We do make pies with kusha. Right. Exactly. Now this is? Uh, this is flaked coconut that's been processed a bit to make it easier to digest, yeah. let's say. So you just run that through a chopper like right. a... Right. Mm -hmm. now, now we have two eggs going two in eggs as well. Beaten. So the two eggs are, are going to go into it and exactly. then a little bit coconut flavoring, Flavor. you would tell me. This is just exactly. a flavoring right just out of the... about a yeah. teaspoon of that. Okay. And, uh, and then the, a little then the, heavy cream. Oh, heavy cream. So it's got to be really rich. Yes, huh? <laughs> it is rich. So now this would all be mixed together really nicely. It's got that great kashaw pumpkin right. flavor to it, like a pumpkin pie filling. It would go into a baking dish. Yes. And then you would top it with little pats of butter to make mm -hmm. it nice and buttery. Exactly. And then, and then even a little bit more of the processed yes. coconut. Right. And then bake at 350 for about... Okay. 30, 30, 40 35 minutes. minutes and this however. is what it looks like when it's done. It's absolutely fantastic. Right. And look at the other dishes on the table here. That gorgeous yes. coconut cake right here. Exactly. And that's a that's a carrot. This is all dishes of Creole. Exactly. So. Parsley carrots yeah. and a rice dressing and pork roast. Oh, that pork roast <laughs> looks great. And the stuffed peppers <laughs> with stuffed the jambalaya and seafood. Now yes. this is really a treat. What do you call this? These pecans? Well, we call them Creole Go. Creole Go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a type of cookie or candy, you might say. Right. Uh, it has a little flour in the mixture and a little rum. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why it's Creole Go. Well, uh, Lily, thanks so much for sharing this great recipe with Thank us. We you. appreciate it so much. And I always look forward to sitting at your table. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Mm, Creole Go. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. I know uh, I know you were asking the question, what, what is a Cushaw anyway? What's a Cushaw? Governor, you know what a Cushaw is. I mean, look, old crook. <laughs> Uh, just a good old crook neck pumpkin that the Cajuns and Creoles love. And in fact, we dry them out and hang them and we make bird houses out of them. After all the inside uh, dried out, we'd cut little holes in it. We'd raise Martins in them after we made the pies. Now, uh, Lily, this was, a, this was really a great idea to do that dish right there. Um, what about the uh, uh, Creole dishes uh, in general, Creole cook? What makes it, you mentioned it, it's a little bit different from New Orleans, uh, the, the Creoles of Cane River, but uh, give us an example of that. You mentioned some herbs, but what else? Well, uh, I think we have an infusion of fruit, 
yeah. into our dishes uh, also. Yeah, a lot of like chutneys or fresh, uh, fresh fruit. Yeah. yeah, and coconut, for example. Now, you know, I noticed that I have mm -hmm. a beautiful coconut cake here mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, I guess one of your relatives made. Yes, huh? yes. I'm going to uh, take it with me here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I can yes. understand that. Now, you brought me a little, uh, Governor, keep your hands out of here. Look, I, look, I love you, but uh, I love you, but hey, you keep uh, Tara watching. Uh, look, look at here, y'all fresh muffins. Creole gold. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you one of those, guys. Uh, pralines. Oh, pralines from the basket. I'll give you one of those. This. Tea cake. Tea cakes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know where that's going. That's going home with daddy. That's what. <laughs> Now you know uh, 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 another question that I just have to ask because it all it uh, they weren't married, Marie, and uh, they, they weren't married, but yet all of their children went over to Europe as as family and were educated there, traveled there, studied there. I mean that was that was kind of odd as well, or was that normal? I would imagine it was normal normal for the time and circumstance. Right. You see, with not having any uh, European women are short of uh, European right, women sure, sure. here at that particular time uh, and the custom and traditions of the Frenchmen toward uh, relationships right. of other ethnicities and yeah, it cultures. Was more, it was more open. It then. was yeah. more open and it was it it was just one of the things that happened. It, it, uh, was, do, it was accepted. It was accepted. Uh, and, and, during and, that and then of course they time. brought back with them all of the knowledge gained uh, from being uh, in Europe. So, exactly. No, no, See, good, uh, good point. Good point. Uh, all right, y'all. Hey, y'all ready for a roast? This is a. Uh, you ever heard the? Uh, we, uh, yeah, you ever heard? We talked. Uh, we, we we talked a while back about the term in Creole PK. Had you ever heard that term? PK. -ed? PK PK was when you drank too much, and you wobbled down the street. You were PK. Yeah, you, you were overstuffed, huh? <laughs> Well, hey, this is all the stuff too, right here. So, so the Creoles had a term and a roast like this, a pecaned picnic shoulder or a pecaned pork roll stuffed with all kind of good garlic. And look, look, look at the garlic slices. Oh yeah, I got this recipe. You know who I got it from? Lily. I got, <laughs> I got it from Lily. And while I'm stuffing it, this is, you're not gonna believe this, an overnight pork roast. An overnight, it goes into a 500 degree oven. I'm gonna put it into my pot. I'm gonna put all of my seasonings. I've already seasoned it, except for the little bit I just put on there. It's all rubbed with salt and pepper. I'm gonna surround it with onions and celery and bell pepper and all those great things, uh, more garlic. And then it's gonna go into a 500 degree oven for one hour, one hour, 500 degrees with a lid. I'm not gonna brown it. Turn the heat off and I'll leave it in there all night 14 hours. How long can you leave it in there? You can leave it longer than that. Yes. It's like butter, I'm gonna show you one in just a second, I'd add stock to it. Uh, Governor, what about uh, uh, Louisiana tourism? I know we've had some issues since the big storms uh, of late and the rebuilding of New Orleans, but why should people come here? Well, because they can't find what they find in Louisiana anywhere else in the world. If you just look in this room, just look around, the paintings, uh, and the right. artwork of Virgie Banks, the right. food, and that's right. the reason why Louisiana continues to be an international competitor, even though we're a very, very small place. Just yesterday, a prince from Saudi Arabia came uh, to help because of Rita and Katrina, but what he was talking about was the rest of the world really values the culture that Louisiana has made over our history that they can't find anywhere else. And, and Governor, here's great opportunity for us too because everybody's looking at Louisiana. They're all seeking out the uniqueness that we have. And you know what? Just like you being here today, just like us sharing all of this with them, I know you're coming. I know you're coming. And you know what? We're waiting for you just like this. Big old open home. Because we love you and we have good food for you too and good friends. Y'all, the roast is out of the oven. It cooked for 14 hours in the juice. I'm going to put it right on top of the dirty rice here real fast. And Virgie, your artwork, look at that breaking apart. Is that tender? <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> now, um, Virgie, thanks so much for that beautiful artwork on the wall. Y'all, the foods of Cane River, no doubt about it, absolutely fantastic. I have meat pies. Here, hey, would y'all mind handing these around the room, please? Uh, give everybody a knack of this meat pie, huh? Just pass them around. <laughs>
The meat pies of Natchitoches, y'all. I tell you, time flies when you're enjoying good food and good conversation with friends in the kitchen. Thanks for stopping by as we continue to explore our unique food heritage and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Y'all, we love you. Come and see us. <laughs> To purchase the Encyclopedia of Cajun and Creole Cuisine by Chef John Bowles, featuring more than 750 traditional recipes, a CD-ROM of the book, or a copy of the program featuring all three episodes of Today's Culture, call the number on your screen. Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music, and the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all.